Telecom networks of any country play a very important role. You use your telecom network provider to make calls, receive messages, and use the internet. But have you ever wondered how prone our telecom networks are to digital threats? Yes. Our telecom networks are basically IoT devices that have access to the internet, and everything that has internet access is basically hackable. Today, there are a lot of risks to our mobile networks, and some of the most common are SIM swapping, SS7 attacks, baseband exploits, and a few more, which we're going to talk about in a while. But before that, let me tell you about the SALT Typhoon attack on the U.S. telecom network. In recent months, a highly sophisticated cyber espionage campaign known as SALT Typhoon has targeted major U.S. telecommunications providers. Linked to Chinese state-sponsored threat actors, this campaign has exposed critical infrastructure and sensitive data through a combination of stolen credentials, advanced malware, and unpatched vulnerabilities. The SALT Typhoon campaign had far-reaching consequences, affecting an estimated 1 million users, including key organizations and government entities in Washington, D.C. I've linked a blog post in the description about this on our site. You can read it if you want to know more. Data breaches are also a very common issue with traditional telecom networks. The U.S. telco networks have been breached a lot of times. Like in July 2024, data of 109 million AT&T users containing records of calls and texts was illegally downloaded to a third-party cloud platform. Similarly, in February 2024, a Verizon employee gained unauthorized access to a file containing sensitive information of over 63,000 employees, including names, social security numbers, physical addresses, and more. Telecommunication networks were never safe from data breaches. You can view a whole timeline of U.S. telco network data breaches in 2024 through the link in the description. Not only data breaches, traditional telco networks are also prone to a lot of other cyber attacks, like SIM swapping. In SIM swapping attacks, hackers take control of your mobile phone number and trick the telecom provider into linking your number to a SIM card they control. It's also used when switching to embedded SIMs or eSIMs, which are quite common nowadays. Another similar type of attack on telecom networks is the SS7 attack. An SS7 attack is a security vulnerability that allows a remote attacker to intercept texts, track your location, and steal data. Unlike other cyber attack methods, SS7 attacks can use various vulnerabilities to perform malicious activities, most of which can be executed remotely from anywhere in the world. Telecom security risks are very harmful. Even top tech leaders like Jack Dorsey, the co-founder of Twitter, have fallen victim to mobile network vulnerabilities. In 2019, hackers took control of his Twitter account using a method called SIM swapping. They tricked his mobile provider into transferring his phone number to a SIM card they controlled. With access to his number, they used Twitter's old tweet via SMS feature to post offensive tweets from his account. These are some threats to telecom companies from hackers or other malicious actors, which can cause data breaches and put your digital identity at risk. But do you know that you even have threats from your own telecom company? Many traditional telecom companies legally sell user data, like browsing history, app usage, and location data, to advertisers and third parties. While often buried in terms of service, this practice is allowed in many countries under the label of marketing or analytics. This data is then used for targeted ads, tracking user behavior across apps and websites. More seriously, Location data sold to data brokers has been misused in the past. For example, journalists have shown how it can be used to track individuals' movements, sometimes down to their homes or workplaces. In worst-case scenarios, this has led to stalking, harassment, and serious privacy violations, proving how a legal business model can still put users at real-world risk. So these were some problems with traditional telecom networks and companies. But now you're probably thinking, there must be a solution to all this, right? Yeah, there are a lot. But the one I know is CAPE. CAPE is America's privacy-first mobile carrier, providing premium nationwide coverage that won't track or sell your data. 
CAPE is a great solution to all the security problems with traditional telecom networks mentioned above. We're going to discuss them in a while, but before that, while many people use tools like VPNs, encrypted messenger apps, and private browsers to protect themselves, app-based solutions can't fix vulnerabilities at the network level. Attacks like SIM swaps, SS7 surveillance, voicemail hacking, and metadata leaks happen below the surface, where traditional privacy tools can't reach. That's where CAPE comes in, all right? So first, I mentioned data breaches in digital telecom companies. But the good thing is that it's not possible in the case of CAPE. CAPE doesn't keep any data from its users that could lead to a data breach later. CAPE collects the minimum amount of data necessary to provide service. When you sign up, they don't ask for your name, SSN, address, email, or any other personal information. Any data they do collect is stored for the minimum amount of time possible. For example, they store call logs for no more than 60 days, whereas other carriers may store them for years. Even during payment, you're only asked for a card number. The next thing I mentioned was SIM swapping, and thankfully that's not possible with CAPE either. CAPE works kind of like your crypto wallet. You're provided with a secret key that you need to keep safe in order to access your account. CAPE prevents SIM swapping by using encryption similar to what secures crypto wallets. You get a unique 24-word recovery phrase generated locally on your device when you sign up. That phrase is never known by CAPE. It generates your private key, and it's the only way to move your number to a new device. This protects you from both outside attackers and insider threats. I also mentioned SS7 attacks. SS7 or other signaling attacks exploit the protocols that telecom networks use to connect calls and texts. These attacks can track your location, intercept communication, or deliver malware, often without you ever knowing. CAPE's proprietary firewall detects and blocks these threats in real time. It verifies that the physical location of your device matches the one requested in the signaling data. If there's a mismatch, the request is blocked, stopping attackers, even if they have access to telecom infrastructure. CAPE also protect your voicemails using encryption, like WhatsApp and other secure chat apps, which makes it even more secure and reliable. CAPE doesn't collect any unnecessary data like your ID card or force you to confirm your identity. And that's something that makes CAPE unique from other telecom providers who collect tons of your data before even giving you a SIM. This feature of CAPE can be super useful for cybersecurity experts and ethical hackers. They can get anonymous numbers easily for investigating digital threats, keep personal and work numbers separate. I think CAPE is the future of private communication. CAPE has also collabed with Proton. You probably know about Proton, the private email service. CAPE has partnered with Proton to offer CAPE subscribers six months of either Proton Unlimited or Proton VPN Plus for just $1. CAPE is still in beta. You can check it out through the first link in the description. Use the discount code shown to get 33% off for your first six months.